from a sinkhole. This is Here Be Monsters. Here Be Monsters, the podcast about the sea and all its toils. The podcast about the unknown. It's mid-September and I'm in Berlin. And every day, the wind is getting stronger. I'm standing next to a railroad in the southern part of the city. I'm on the border between two neighborhoods. There's a big busy road here too, and some apartment buildings nearby. But I'm a bit hidden from the road by some trees and a big fence. And in front of me, there's this colossal cylinder of concrete. It's been slowly sinking into the ground here for the past 80 years. It's the Schwerbelastungskörper, or the heavy load-bearing body. The Schwerbelastungskörper is about 70 feet across, about 50 high, and it is indeed very heavy. This pile of concrete weighs something in the neighborhood of 25 million pounds. The Schwerbelastungskörper is one of the very few pieces of Nazi architecture left in the city of Berlin. And what's strange about it is it was never supposed to be permanent. It was always supposed to be taken down. But here it is, 80 years later. The concrete looks weathered. It seems like it might be crumbling a little bit. I can't quite tell. At the base of the structure, there's an open door. And I walk through it, but it doesn't take me very far. It just leads here, to this small room in the middle. It's shaped like a diamond. The ceilings are barely high enough for me to walk upright. There's a couple air vents built into the walls. And at one corner, there's this weird brick pedestal that's painted white. I set my recorder down here. I'm the only one in the room for now. Test, 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 test. Okay. I'm going to record a couple impulse responses in this kind of central room here. Since I'm alone, I pull some balloons out of my bag. I'm going to record the sound of them popping from a couple different angles and distances. These popping sounds are called impulse responses, and they can be really useful in editing. But let me kind of digitally recreate this space on my computer so I can come back here anytime I want and hear what my voice would sound like in this room. I just feel like I'm not very good at thinking on the spot. I usually need a bit of time to start connecting the dots. It's honestly kind of a relief that I don't find this place beautiful. It's just crumbling concrete, dirty floors and low ceilings. Not far from the Schwerbelastungskörper, there's a park, and the park is completely unlike any park I've ever been to before. It's called Tempelhofer Feld, and it's flat, it's almost completely square, and it's huge. It's like the size of Central Park in New York. And like a lot of things in Germany, Tempelhofer Feld is just kind of littered with history. Back in the Middle Ages, the Knights Templar used to hang out here. That's where the name Tempelhof comes from. After that, the Prussian army used the field for military exercises. And in the early days of aviation, Orville Wright came here to fly. There's a building made of limestone that wraps itself around one corner of the park. It's shaped like an eagle flying with its wings outstretched. It used to be the terminal building for the Tempelhof Airport. And it's huge. It used to be one of the biggest buildings in the world. 
It was built in the 1930s by forced laborers under the supervision of Albert Speer. Speer was the Nazi architect in charge of redesigning Berlin to be the new capital city of the world. After the terminal building was completed, one of Speer's British contemporaries called Tempelhof the quote, mother of all airports. Nazi architecture is made in the style of bigness and grandeur that sometimes gets called imposing. But I guess I don't always see it that way, and I'm uncomfortable and confused by the fact that I find this old airport building beautiful, even welcoming. But maybe that's because I was clueless when I first came here. I just saw it how it is today, as a public park. People come here to ride their bikes on the old runways, fly kites, play mini golf, tend to the gardens. There's a herd of sheep that lives here, and lots of kids are always playing in the grass. Adults drink beer in the sunshine. Everyone's playing music, watching the birds. Today it's a really magical place. It can be really hard to imagine the badnesses behind it. I was three or four when I had my first nightmare, at least the first one I can remember. I was sleeping on the bottom bunk and I opened up my eyes in the middle of the night. Above me on the dresser, there were these swirling colors and I crawled out of bed to go look at it. I sat cross-legged on the floor near the dresser and the colors were beautiful at first. As it swirled, I saw octopus arms reaching out of the wall, and I heard cackling laughter as Ursula, the sea witch, rose above me in her giant form. Lightning crackled all around her. I thought it was real. There's a region of Austria called Tyrol. It's in the west of the country, mostly up in the Alps. And in the spring, in Tyrol, they put these bells on the cows, and they put these crowns of flowers, too. And they lead them up out of the towns, up into the mountains where they feed on endless fields of clover. Back in World War II, Tyrol was the subject of heavy Allied bombings. And I had no idea about this history until I looked it up after the fact. I really didn't see any evidence of war this summer when my girlfriend and I hiked through Tyrol for a few days. Today, there's cows and alpine rabbits, salamanders and waterfalls, and extremely fit people in their 60s who just want to know what life is like in the place where you're from. We walked up a valley with a river to a lodge snowy peaks all around us with fields of scree and fields of clover with cows wearing bells. A dark brown horse with a white patch on its forehead followed us around, asking us for scratches on the cheek, checking my jacket pockets for food. Somewhere in this beautiful valley, somewhere in the loose rocks near here, there's the bombed out wreckage of an experimental Nazi helicopter that some 80 years ago they had tried and failed to hide. We went to bed early, slept in a lodge by ourselves, and I had a really vivid dream about two ghosts, a man and a woman in their 40s. They were sitting at the other end of the lodge with a lantern on the table. They looked kind. I tried to talk to them, but they couldn't speak. So we just smiled and stared at each other for a while. And eventually, I fell all the way back to sleep. The goal of the Schwerbelastungskörper was to test the ground. Hitler wanted a monument here, a massive triumph arch over an equally massive road. 
The arch would have been the biggest in the world, about 400 feet high. And the Schwerbelastungskörper was the Triumph Arch's test structure. Its 25 million pounds of concrete is roughly the same weight that one of the arch's four legs would have needed to support. So they built it here in 1941, using forced labor from prisoners of war. And throughout the 1940s, the war escalated, and the Schwerbelastungskörper started sinking into the ground. The Triumph Arch was never built, and it never could have been. Berlin is built on a marsh. The ground here is just too soft. There's a small museum here with interpretive signs written in German and English. They call the Nazi plans for redesigning Berlin megalomaniacal, and part of a quote, inhuman urban planning. But also in the museum, there are renderings of what the arch would have looked like. And again, I catch myself feeling bad for liking the way it looked. I think the scary parts of the world are easier to explain if we treat aesthetics and ethics as if they're somehow the same thing. Beauty necessitates good. Ugliness necessitates evil. I've been watching Lord of the Rings with my girlfriend, or more accurately, Der Herr der Ringe. Alles begann mit dem Schmieden der großen Ringe. Drei wurden den Elben gegeben, unsterblich und die weisesten und reinsten aller Lebewesen. It's exactly the same movies, just dubbed in German. And I don't know, I've seen the originals plenty of times, but this time it struck me different. Specifically the depictions of orcs. Tolkien, in his books, and Peter Jackson in the movies, chose to represent orcs as inherently crude. In their speech, in their actions, but most interestingly to me, crude in their aesthetic. Their weapons are asymmetrical and rough-hewn. Their armor is pieced together, their arrows don't fly straight, and their only major form of art is the art of allegiance to authority. They're not even born. They're pulled directly from the earth. They have no families, no histories, no stories that precede them. Their only motivations are evil. And I think their visual crudeness is often used as evidence to prove that. Compare that with the others of Middle-earth. Compare that with the races of men where even the swords of the peasant warriors glimmer. Compare that to the dwarves who take immense pride in their beards, their metallurgy. Or to the elves, with their combat discipline, their superior technology, their uncomfortably Nordic complexions. It it just feels a little more complicated than it used to. World War II ended in 1945. The war and its after effects killed about 3% of the world. Germany was divided and so was Berlin, with West Berlin being a complete island in East Germany, which was a satellite state of the Soviet Union. In 1948, the Soviets cut off supply lines to West Berlin, leaving it completely without food and other supplies. It was the first major conflict of the Cold War. With land routes blocked, Berliners looked to Tempelhof once again. They constructed a Luftbrücke, or an air bridge, landing hundreds of flights there each day to keep West Berliners from starving until the blockade ended. Now, a couple years back, Tempelhof Airport was finally decommissioned, and there were plans to build luxury condos there. But Berliners protested this until the plans were scrapped and they just turned the entire airport into a public park full of children, community gardens, kites, bicycles, sheep, falcons, etc. 
And today, the main terminal at Tempelhof, the mother of all airports, the crown jewel of Nazi architecture, is used to house thousands of refugees who've fled conflict in Syria. There were plans to demolish the Schwerbelastungskörper, but it was too close to some apartment buildings for it to be safely removed. And so this cylinder of concrete that was never supposed to stay here, it too remains in Berlin, with free admission and a very small museum, and an observation tower that lets you climb up a couple flights of stairs to see the top of the concrete structure and a small panorama of the neighborhood. There's a couple benches and some graffiti written in blue spray paint with a simple message. Fuck Nazis. Before I leave, I walk around the sunken structure one last time. There's something more here, in the very far back corner of the lot. I wasn't expecting to see it here. It's something that I quite like. Beehives, lots of them. And I walk up, and they're all a little bit too busy to care that I'm recording them. So I put my recorder right up to the entrance of one of the hives. Just sit there and watch them for a while, doing what they do which has helped flowers grow in the shadow of the Schwerbelastungskörper. My name is Jeff Emptman, and I made this episode of Here Be Monsters. Music on this episode came from The Black Spot. Here Be Monsters is an independent podcast supported by occasional advertising and recurring donations from listeners. If you'd like to help out, please visit patreon.com slash hbmpodcast. If you'd like to participate in the Here Be Monsters art exchange, please fill out the registration form on the website by November 10th, 2022. That's hbmpodcast.com slash art. Now here's some news. I, I think I've said this before on the show, or I've at least hinted at it pretty strongly, but I'm moving to Berlin at the end of the year, and I'm really looking forward to it. It's a beautiful, multicultural, multilingual place with tons of people who have interesting ideas about sound and music. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I know this is a long shot, but just in case you happen to know anyone in Berlin who has office space available for rent, will you please let me know? I'm looking for a place to work out of. It's surprisingly hard to find office space in Berlin. So just reach out if you know something. It's hbmpodcast at gmail.com. And there's also a contact form up on the website, which is hbmpodcast. Thank you. I appreciate any help I can get on this one. And thanks for listening. More episodes soon.